Hi, I'm Quinn Curtis, and I'm here at Oil Life today for our Feature Friday. And we have a special guest. We have Spencer Pettit joining us today to talk about the Belief Blueprint. Welcome. Hi yeah, thank you. It's <laughs> good to so be here. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, and um, for those of you that were watching, he had an amazing workshop last night on this amazing content, too, mm -hmm. that I was so impressed by. Um, and I was, you know, as somebody who's growing a business as well, I was thinking like, oh, I've got to share this with my team. So we're excited to share this with you and tell you a little bit more about what the Belief Blueprint is and why it matters and how it can really support you, especially in creating the kind of life that you desire and the business success that you're looking for. Um, but before we go there, I wanted to mention Spencer has so generously offered that one lucky person who comments below this video right now is going to be able to get their own copy of the Belief Blueprint book right now. So we'll um, be picking a lucky winner at that point. Um, so be sure to comment below during the video and be sure to ask any questions as well. We're happy to answer any questions in real time. Um, and then also know that we have a really cool discount that we'll be sharing with you at the end of the video um, for you to be able to get this book for you and a friend or you and someone on your team. So be sure to stay tuned for that. But Spencer, tell us a little bit more about what the Belief Blueprint really is and yeah. why it matters. Happy to. So uh, personally, I'd, I uh, have been growing a business for the last five years. And there came a time just in the first few months where I realized that I was running out of, of people to talk to I was running out of, of leads and all this stuff was going down and I was just really like not feeling it and I went and spoke with my mentor and she actually said what you really need to do is to work on your belief you need to work on your confidence mm -hmm. and I thought well I, I've always been a confident person and mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that I could do this yeah. and she said what you simply need is you need to keep working on it. You need to do the things that will help grow your belief. Mm. And that started the journey towards what finally became the Belief Blueprint. I'm a marketing guy uh, by training. I graduated from college in business. And, uh, you know, this, a lot of the things that we do, uh, for example, uh, with essential oils or, w or with nutrition or exercise in the business that we have, um, it's, uh, as good as all that is, my heart is still very much in, in explaining concepts and developing things. And so what happened is that I started with a very simple idea of the process of building belief, mm -hmm. and it developed into a machine that actually leverages all of the hope that you have into mm -hmm. unbreakable confidence. And That's powerful. <laughs> That's worth repeating. Leveraging the hope you have mm -hmm. to create unbreakable confidence. Well, and here's the, the, powerful. Co the coolest thing about the Belief yeah. Blueprint is that you already use it. All I'm doing is I'm finally outlining it for people in a really clear way. The, the thing about it is it's, it's brilliantly simple. It's just, it's so simple that people look at it and they immediately go, oh my gosh, I totally understand this. And then once you understand it, you can put it to work for you. Mm -hmm. And it can start to change your beliefs. You can actually start to get away from the ones that are holding you back and work on the ones that you want to develop. And you can really go for the things that you want to. You can take all of those hopes that you have and over a period of time, short or long or wherever, whatever's the right pace for you, mm -hmm. turn it into something that you are absolutely confident in. That's a really powerful claim <laughs> and I'm, I love it. I'm so excited and I think that um, it would help everybody watching if you maybe defined a little bit what you mean by hope because I think that what yeah. your definition <laughs> is, is a lot stronger than what we're used to. Yeah, so um, one of the things that was frustrating to me the most is that people were always talking about finding your why. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. was always like, ah, you got to find your why, you got to find your why. And at one point along the way, I told my mentor, the same mentor that inspired me to start down this path, I told the same mentor, I'm going to crack the nut. I'm going <laughs> to figure out where it is that somebody finally comes alive. I want to figure this out. And I knew that it had something to do with the why. But what I found out is that when most people are talking about their whys, they're actually talking about their what's. Wow. Now, when I say they're what, let me be really clear. Is they're talking about physical goals. I want money. I want to lose weight. Um, I want a house. I want a car. I want financial freedom or time freedom. Mm -hmm. All of those things are very much like physical goals. Mm -hmm. And when people say that that's their why, or even better, sometimes people will even say that their why is someone else or another group. Mm -hmm. A really popular one is just maybe their kids or their family. Yeah. While all those things are very motivating, your why is not a physical goal. 
And I know a lot of people are sitting here going, oh my gosh, this, what is, is, it? this is heresy. You know, I've, <laughs> I've been taught so many different things. Right, what right. we discovered is that there's actually a deeper thing. And this is just semantics, okay? So people get really caught up on this. But your why is actually the deep emotions that you have trained throughout your life. All of the experiences that you've had that has shaped who you've become and have shown what you really believe. And whether it's true or not, it doesn't have to be true. The stories that are being told between your left and right ears are true to you. Yeah. Okay? And so there's a lot of confusion about what it is that really motivates you, but y all of you know that either you personally or someone who you work with has lost motivation along the way. Yeah. Maybe you've lost that motivation. Maybe you feel stuck. And the truth is it's probably because your why wasn't strong enough. Some people are like, you know what? I'm good not having the financial freedom or I'm good not having that house or whatever it was that was on that vision board. Yeah. We fill our vision boards with all these images of these, of these what's, these goals. Mm -hmm. The truth is, is that they all represent um, things that we feel like will fill those deep unmet needs mm -hmm. that are the actual emotional drivers that push us forward. So yeah, you'll discover w what you're supposed to be doing along the way. Mm -hmm. You'll discover all of the greatness that's ahead of you as you move forward. But in the belief blueprint, I uncover how to dig down through the layers. That's why actually on the cover, there's a paper yeah. tear that pulls it back. It's like we're pulling back the layers here to uncover the, your belief blueprint. Mm -hmm. and, and so what it represents is, is this, this uh, process of getting down through the layers, like peeling the onion and getting down to the real core raw emotions that make you do what you do. You can just ask my wife. She didn't marry me because um, of logic, <laughs> right? <laughs> she, she didn't look at my resume and say, right. you know what, this, this guy's actually, he meets all the criteria. Yeah. Instead, at the end of the day, she, she, was, she decided to marry me because of how she felt. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's, we make all the decisions based on how we feel. So we have to acknowledge that we're emotional creatures and that we make decisions mm -hmm. based on what we believe. And that's based on, all on emotion and feeling. There's no other way around it. Yeah. And so um, we have to learn how to shape that. And that's what this machine that I've outlined, a very simple machine, outlines how to build belief. It's so powerful. And I know that for those of you listening, you're probably wondering, like, well, what would this actually look like in action? Is there an, an example you could give of maybe like somebody's belief that you worked with that like where it was when it was a what, because they most often are, and then how it could evolve to get to this heartfelt point that you're describing? Yeah, so uh, a good friend of mine uh, who I actually became friends with after we went initially through this finding your why exercise that's in the first few chapters of the book, mm. Um, I had a chance to take her through it and we really struggled actually for we were at a retreat that was three days long and for the first couple of days she was really struggling to peel back those layers mm -hmm. and so we worked through it we asked the questions and you'll see in here there's just questions that walk you down very quickly through your cognitive layers all the way down to those limbic trained automatic almost responses mm -hmm. and once we finally peel back the layers this woman discovered that, that all she kept saying was I want to be a fun mom Hmm. I want to throw my kids in uh, an RV and go on vacations. I want to be the one who my kids are always happy to see and all those things. She, it was all this stuff. And so she kept saying, I want to go on vacation. I want to do this. And so there's all these what's mm -hmm. that were up on the vision board, so to speak. Yeah. When we finally got down to it, it was that she felt that she hadn't had a mom that was fun. Hmm. And she felt that it had affected her life adversely and had held her back in a lot of ways. And I know this is like really deep, like ooey gooey yeah. stuff and people even listening right now might be like, oh wow, that's really like, <laughs> those are places we don't like to go. That's why so many of us struggle to find our why mm. is because it lives in those areas of our brain that society and social convention have taught us not to visit. Mm. And so once she uncovered that, oh my gosh, the emotion came with it because that's where all these things live. Wow. If you're crying, chances are good, you know you found your why or you're at least going in the right direction. So the emotion came with it, but here's the most beautiful part. Once she put that in motion, mm -hmm. locked in that, that dot, I call it, that starting point mm -hmm. of knowing that she wanted to be the mom that she didn't have. She wanted to be for her kids that support, but it was for her hmm. to be satisfied that she had that. Yeah. Once she had that starting point, she could set any goal. And this is the thing is once you have two points, and we talk about this in the book, mm -hmm. mathematically, once you have two points, you have a straight line. 
all of a sudden you now know the direction that you're supposed to go in. That <laughs> I love it. It's so it's yes. so basic, but yet we overlook it so much. Mm. If we don't have the right starting point, if we're doing it for the wrong reasons, mm -hmm. or we're constantly changing this, we're we're it's like our our strategy, the line in between, the how. Yeah which always works itself out as long as you have your two points, that how in between, well, it'll just spin. It'll just or, spin. You're all over the place. Okay. Yeah, you're just, you're all over. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have speed bumps or yeah. difficulty along the way. It just means that you, people always say they're spinning their wheels. And when I, mm. when I hear spinning their wheels now, I just think of that strategy just spinning all over without an anchor to start with mm. and an anchor to set your sights on. Mm -hmm. And yes, your why will change and evolve as those yeah. needs are met. The, your what's will change and evolve as you meet those needs. Hmm. So yeah, we're, we're constantly readjusting course and that's okay. But we're just talking about today for the things that you need mm -hmm. and the things that you want. Let's lock in those points and let's get it going. This woman has gone on to great success, created wow. a six figure income, works with thousands of people, has influence across the, uh, around the world and uh, very happy, beautiful family. And what a what a cool starting point to uncover yeah. that and then to set that trajectory and uh, they accomplish those goals very quickly after uncovering those initial things. Now these were talented driven people to begin with, right? right. But it sure it sure helped to kind of have the game plan laid out, yeah. um, have the blueprint already in, in sight. Yeah. So powerful. Are we? Um, if there's any questions have it, that you have, be sure to put them in the comments. We'd love to get them answered while we have Spencer on the line. Um, but man, this has been um, so insightful. And I love it, and I'd love if you could speak to, um, was there any questions showing? Okay, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them coming. If not, be sure to comment below, at very least, so that you can be entered to win one of the Belief Blueprint books. You're going to want this book. It's just one of those foundational things that's going to help you with the success that you're trying to create, and just the, the happiness that you're trying <laughs> to create in your life as well. Right. Um, so I would love to hear just kind of um, any final powerful insights or points that you have about you know why this process is so important why it matters um, and specifically I think what's coming up is maybe some validation that like what you're wanting to create really does matter and yeah. that this supports that would you say yeah I, I think I think what was going on with me back at the very beginning is a great example of um, how things can change meaning why this matters uh, I was I was frustrated. I was three months in. I'd run out of people to talk to. I I didn't have um, I didn't have the belief that I could go any further. And mm. the things that I learned and that have been outlined in this model have just taken me from feeling hopeless and stuck and um, well, just a, a great word for it that we cover in the book is despair. It's that loss mm. of hope. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really lame place to be and I'm finding the more that I'm out teaching this message and, and sharing with people I'm finding that there's so many people that have lost that hope yeah. and uh, I mean it's it's so much that it, like all of us it's a common experience all of us feel that and there's emotion in all of our voices and behind all of our eyes <clears throat> when we talk about that experience of losing hope because all of us have been there yeah. you have those dark nights and those cloudy days where you're sitting there wondering if it's gonna be okay and there, I've been there, every amazing person that I know has been there. Yeah. And the only way to get out of it and the only way to keep moving forward is to, is to take those steps. And the very first step is to simply spark hope again. Hmm. It's just to spark hope. You find something that you're hoping for. And you don't have to look very far because your limbic brain, and I know this sounds really scientific, oh my gosh, he went from like, all the touchy feely stuff to talking about brains. <laughs> <laughs> Your limbic brain's job is to keep you alive. And we can't differentiate on some levels mentally the difference between actually like starving or being on the edge of a cliff about to be pushed off or any of those. Uh, we experience a lot of the same emotions and they've even mapped the brain and found that there's areas of the brain that react in the same way whether it's a, whether it's a believed situation or whether it's an actual situation. Hmm. And so that loss of hope is a very real thing that, that can affect us physically and emotionally and long term. And once, once you spark that hope again and start taking, taking steps forward towards those goals that you know will fulfill those needs that you feel need to be met, finding a great vehicle to push it forward on, you will start to feel little drops filling your bucket again. You'll start to feel those little things coming in and you'll start to realize 
that the scales of experience are tipping in your favor, that all of a sudden you're starting to feel momentum, you're starting to feel belief again. So my advice and why it matters is just to say, find the hope, find the thing that you hope for. If you feel like you've lost hope, if you feel, if you feel like your dream hasn't worked out for some reason, find something else to hope for. You, you still have these deep needs that aren't, that aren't met. So s spark that first, set some goals out there that will fulfill that over time, and then just start moving forward, start climbing, start walking forward. Mm, I love that so much. I'm so grateful for all you've shared. And as you were talking, I was just thinking, you know, maybe if there's one final piece to talk through is just that, um, you know, as a leader, a business builder hearing this, mm -hmm. I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, like, this is, I want people starting on that <laughs> fair point because right. I know that there, there's definitely been seasons in my, in my growth of, of my own business too that I've been like, I cannot enroll another person. Mm -hmm. I cannot let another person's hopes get up right. without like a strong, clear path in mm -hmm. place, you know? And it's for that very reason. Like, right. I don't want to be a part of them losing hope again. Well, and, and what you're alluding to is that we actually stand in the way of our own success because of our belief. Mm, yep. We can't project onto somebody else something that we don't believe ourselves. So good. And if, yep. we, and if we try to do that, we come across as, as wildly insincere and people can smell it a mile away. Yep. And yeah. it's terrible. It's a terrible way to grow a business. It's a terrible way to lead. Right. If somebody doesn't believe that their leader believes what they're doing, mm -hmm. then they're not going to follow you. They're not going to be part of a cause. Totally. People will follow someone who has stronger belief than they do. They want to so believe right. that you, they want to believe that you know what you're doing. They want to believe that you know where you're at. And you're, you might just be a couple steps ahead. The truth is, and again, my mentor shouted this at me one day, none of us know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> We're all figuring it out along the way. We started with our hope. We set our goals out there to fill those up. And this how is working itself out along the way. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that matters most is that we've set our trajectory. Mm -hmm. So as leaders, we have to get to that point where we know that we believe in what we're doing. We know what we're about. It doesn't have to be that we know exactly what we're doing. It's that we believe in what we're doing to get there. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing is that we need to stop robbing our people of the experiences that would help them to grow in the same way. Quite often, we're so desperate that we jump in and try to save the day, yeah. and we rob them of that growth experience. They might know the deep emotional driver, what they're about, and they might, not, they might know the goals of how they're going to fulfill those needs, but we keep stepping in and preventing them from being able to climb on their own. We go and we teach that class for them. We go and we close that person for them. We go and we resolve that concern instead of putting it in their hands, instead of having them do the trainings, instead of having them step up we step in to be the smartest person in the room or whatever it is. And it, it might even be fulfilling our own needs, which is why we're doing <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> True. But we're preventing them from having the very experiences that would help them to become the person we need them to be to be successful. So wow. stop stealing experiences from your people. Stop stealing their opportunities to progress. That will make a significant difference in your own growth and uh, get out of the way of your own success in a way. I love it. I love it. So <laughs> powerful. We're so grateful for you coming today, yeah, Spencer. Thanks and for um, me. I know that this is a video that you might want to watch a few times because there's been so many great insights that Spencer has shared that can really support Thank whatever you. you're creating. And then be sure to run over to oillife.com because today only, for well, for the next 24 hours, then we have a really amazing special that you can actually get one Belief Blueprint book, which is actually already discounted because mm -hmm. you're, it's brand new. Spencer's yep. being so generous <laughs> right now. But you can buy one and get another book for half off. So it's a killer deal because um, I know that it's hard to like grab this book for yourself and not think of somebody else mm -hmm. you know in your life that would also benefit from it as well. So be sure to snag that deal and be sure to comment below so that you can be entered to win a free book as well. And um, yeah, yeah one, one other thing that so I would throw powerful. out is is if any of you have found this to be interesting or after you've read the book, if you think it's interesting, um, I would love for any groups of 10 or more, uh, if you're interested in reaching out to me uh, either through Oil Life or to me directly, you're welcome to find me online on social media. I would love to uh, do presentations to your groups. If you feel like you'd like a webinar or uh, if we're in town, my, my family and I are actually on the road full time right now so fun. for a myriad of reasons, but this is one thing that we're taking with us. Um, and uh, if we're in your town or if you want to get us online, I'd be happy to help uh, with the webinar or something to, to talk to your people. Just with, the, just with the requirement that you've got 10 or more people and that you've picked up enough books for all of them so mm -hmm. that they're all uh, using them. 
because it's no good to have a presentation if they don't have the reference guide and, and a way to go through it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That is so generous of you to offer, I'm and I know that a lot of people are going to be excited about that opportunity, and we're definitely looking at dates so that we can schedule a larger webinar experience for you guys to attend as well. So be sure to watch the Oil Life Facebook events section um, and also the newsletter where we'll be sure to tell you all about when that's going to happen. But thank you again so <laughs> much for being here, Spencer. We're so grateful for you sharing your insights and you know such powerful awareness with all of us today. Thank you. It's real meaningful for me to be able to share it. It's meant a lot to me and my growth, and I hope it means something to someone else. So, thank thank you. you so much, Spencer. And thank you to all of you watching. We're so grateful that you are here and are excited for you to take these insights and implement them into your own success.